Thank you, everyone. And I want to thank the JP Progressives for hosting this tonight and for everybody coming out on what was a rather monsoon-like Wednesday evening. My name is David Keenan, and I'm a candidate for the Register of Probate. As Katie indicated, I'm a lifelong resident of Boston. I grew up in Mattapan and now live in Dorchester. I went to Boston Latin School, and when I was at Boston Latin School, I used to ride the L over to Green Street and walk up to White Stadium for athletic events. But uh, after graduating from, uh, from Boston Latin School, I joined the United States Coast Guard Reserves, where I served for 13 years. I believe that I'm the only one with any military experience running for the position of Register of Probate. Also, when I was in the Coast Guard Reserves, I decided that I was going to attend Mass Maritime Academy. I attended and graduated from Mass Maritime Academy with honors, worked in the maritime field for a couple of years, and then came back to go to law school. I attended Suffolk University Law School at night because I was starting my family and had to support the family while I was going to law school. So I, my first two boys were born while I was a student at Mass Merit, a student at Suffolk University Law School. And then we adopted my daughter 15 years ago from the Suffolk Probate and Family Court. I've been a practicing attorney for 20 years. And during that time, I'm a trial attorney, so I've been in almost every one of the courts of the Commonwealth, including the Probate and Family Courts. And I adopted my daughter out of Suffolk Probate and Family Court. So that's my background, and I guess at this time we should open up for questions. One of the greatest things that we have in the federal system is that we file everything electronically. However, there are problems with the probate and family court in filing things electronically because of the fact that a lot of the information that goes through the probate and family court is very confidential and isn't something that someone should be able to look up on the internet, whether it's a matter of um, trying to find out someone's financial information and things like that. It shouldn't be available to the general public when they are looking at the probate and family court website. However, the filing system up there, unfortunately, is very difficult. You, in Suffolk probate court, basically you have to hand file everything into the courthouse. And it creates difficulties there when you're uh, working with the probate court, when you're working with the clerks and things like that. Most of the people who go to Suffolk probate and family court are pro se. They don't have an attorney. And with them, the electronic filing may not be very useful because of the fact that they may not have access to a computer. So it's not like we can go to the system in the federal courts where they require, they have a mandatory filing of electronic filing, but the system is improving and is working. But you can, federal, you can file impounded things electronically through the federal court. Yes, you can. Um, unfortunately, the state does not have that system yet. It would be wonderful if it does. And I would, I would advocate very strongly to introduce a system similar to what is in the federal court system so that more things can be filed electronically, which would make it so that the only time you have to go to court would be when you have a hearing. And that would free up the time of the clerks, it would free up the time of the case managers, and it would free up the time of the litigants. Most problems that we have in the probate and family court come on the, pro, uh, on the family court side. The probate and family court handles probate matters such as probating wills, administering trusts, and guardianships. But the biggest challenges really reside in the family court side. In the family court side, we have things such as divorce, child custody issues, child support issues, abuse prevention issues. We can have things such as uh, paternity cases where a lot of children are now born out of wedlock and there needs to be a determination of paternity and then further going on to child support. So those are the things that happen and most of the people who come in there come in pro se. And when I say pro se, that means that they're for themselves, they don't have an attorney. And it creates a backlog in the court because people don't know what they need to do to accomplish what they're setting out in the probate court. They don't have the correct forms. They don't have the knowledge of how to get service on their spouse or their ex-spouse. They don't know where to turn in a case of emergency. So what do I want to do to the court to improve that? I want to bring in basically three programs. There wasn't a lawyer for the day program where volunteer lawyers would work with the court and go in each day, different attorneys each day, to provide that type of information to the people who didn't, who didn't have attorneys. They could go to the lawyer of the day, he would get them straight, or her, she would get them straight, get them the right forms to fill out, set them on the right path, and get them going. 
that system has kind of fallen apart because right now there's no leadership in the Suffolk County Registry of Probate because one of the, the current, current, current Register of Probate is on paid administrative leave. Paid administrative leave. So without the leadership, there hasn't been any interaction with the bar associations. The bar associations, the Boston Bar Association and the Mass Bar Association, are the ones who provide these volunteer lawyers. So that's what we need to do. We need to have the Register of Probate act as a liaison between the bar associations, which I'm a member of both of those bar associations, and bring those people back into the courthouse to act as volunteers for the day. The other program that I want to see expanded or brought back into Suffolk Superior Court or Suffolk Probate Court is the conciliation program. In the Norfolk Probate Court, they have a wonderful conciliation program, again, run by the Norfolk County Bar Association. So this is another program where we have to work with the bar associations to bring these uh, necessary people in to work with the people who are there in the courthouse. The court did start, recently, a court service center, but the court service center serves all of the courts that are in the Brooks Courthouse, which includes the housing court, the juvenile court, the Boston Municipal Court, and the Probate and Family Court. That program needs to be expanded. It needs to have more people who can dedicate their time strictly to the Probate and Family Court rather than being for the entire courthouse. The third program that I'd like to see expanded is one of our law schools, Suffolk University Law School, has a clinical program. And by a clinical program, what I mean is they have students who act as attorneys for people who can't afford an attorney. Now, these are third-year law students. They're not students who are just beginning. They're getting ready to graduate. And they also are working under the supervision, a very close supervision, of a clinical instructor at the school. Now, we need to expand this program to include Boston College Law School, Northeastern Law School, Harvard Law School, New England Law School, and to, get, and, um, to include such a program so that we can get more clinical students into the program so that they can volunteer and act as advocates for people who can't afford attorneys. So those are the programs I'd like to see expanded, but also as a register of probate, you're the administrator for approximately 30 people who work in the probate court. And you also are interacting with the public all the time. So you need to be able to advocate on behalf of the people that you're working for and to manage the people that you're working for as well as to get out in front of and deal with the public. But you also have to deal with the court administrators, the judges, and the legislature to make sure that you're getting proper funding for your court. And again, we don't have that in Suffolk right now because there is no leadership in there. And that's what I intend to do, is to bring good, strong leadership back to Suffolk Probate and Family Court. Um, my management experience and training goes all the way back to when I was in the Coast Guard. I started off going to boot camp on the Coast Guard and was uh, advanced up to E6 or a bosun mate first class in the Coast Guard. I went through a number of management training programs with the Coast Guard and they became very useful as I was working as a coxswain in the Coast Guard and also as I went to Mass Maritime Academy. As a third mate on board a ship, you're basically in a management position. You're overseeing all the other folks on the boat. You're making sure that their duties are getting taken care of but you're also making sure that you're not interfering with any of their rights or causing problems with any of their unions. So I've dealt with that. When I was working as a paralegal when I was going to law school, I was in charge of 25 different paralegals at the firm that I worked for. I was a senior paralegal at Burns and Levinson, worked there while I was going through law school, and then since that time I've been working as a trial attorney. And as a trial attorney, you're always managing witnesses, you're always managing clients, you're always managing your caseload, and you're working with people from a diverse background to make sure that you can tell the story that's necessary for your clients in court. The first thing to do is to get into the probate court and to work side by side with the folks that are in there, because there are some very good people that work in that courthouse. Unfortunately, they haven't had any leadership. Without the leadership, they've had a drop in morale. With a drop in morale, things have dropped off and things just aren't getting done in the Suffolk Probate and Family Court. So it's necessary to get in there, work side by side with the folks, learn everyone's job so that when you're managing them, you can tell them and help them how to do their job better. 
It's also a matter of being the first one in the door and the last one out of the door. We can't have a register of probate who's only going to work 15 hours a week. We need someone who's willing to go in there to work every day, to work hard, to work side by side with the folks that are there, to facilitate getting things done quicker, to find new processes and new ways to do things better, and to advocate to bring in the electronic equipment that is necessary. Right now, I believe that Suffolk Probate Court has one fax machine, and the fax machine very seldomly works. So it's necessary to get the funds to get more computers, more updated systems, so that things can work better. We can't squeeze too much out of the individual workers. One of Harry Spence's, the, the administrator for the court system, is you know, working leaner and meaner and trying to get things done. Unfortunately, you can only squeeze so much blood out of a stone without providing the people with the necessary tools in order to allow them to improve their job and to work more efficiently. Now, I understand, and things like that shouldn't be happening, and things like that shouldn't happen because these are human rights issues and also civil rights issues. These are issues that we should be able to get through with the Probate and Family Court because one of the things that the Probate and Family Court handles is name changes. And it should be a fairly simple step for you to be able to change your name. And something like that is, again, something that the registrar could facilitate to find out why things aren't happening. Sometimes things get just get put into a bin and don't get moved up to the courthouse, get up to, to the courtroom, up to the judge. When that happens, someone has to bring that atten to the attention of the register. Or the register needs to go and find out why things aren't happening. So in your case, it would be something similar to that where you could come into the courthouse, say, hey, look, you know, I filed this over a year ago. I filed it two years ago. I don't understand why nothing's happening. We had that problem when we adopted my daughter. My ad daughter's adoption sat for almost a year. And she's a handicapped child. We were attempting to adopt her through DSS. And for some reason, it ended up in a black hole. And no one could explain why. Finally, we went in there. We got it done. The judge, when she finally got the papers, said, I don't understand why this has taken so long. Why in the world has this family had to wait for this long? And in your case, there's no excuse for having to wait that long. All right, well, I want to thank everybody. I think that's all my time. <laughs>